Fire Radio. Hey everyone, Jeremy National Fire Radio. Welcome back to the podcast today. A.B. Turen, my man. How are What's you? What's up, Jeremy? Good morning. Coming to you live from the Forest City here in Middletown. I love that. Look at you. Like popping right in like a radio personality. I got a shame. Coming promote. in live. I love it. Listen, this is long overdue. Um, you and I had met a while back. You're the uh, you're the the guy that uh, put the magic potion together to create Hops and Halligans, which is a uh, based out of Connecticut, which is a uh, lecture series that's happening in different breweries and bars across the state, basically. Um, and I uh, I was a part of one a while back, just tagging along and hanging out and uh, and so on. But a lot of success has come with that. I can't wait to go down that road. But before we even talk about that. There's a career behind you, too. Uh, currently a captain of the training division, Middletown, Connecticut, the Southwest Fire District, I believe. South, or Fire, South District. Fire District. I apologize. South Fire District. Awesome, man. Thanks for joining me. This is cool. Right of the south side, baby. I have to tell you, the one thing that stands out to me right away is your marketing and media and how well you do that. Um, or do you have a background in promotions? I'm curious. I always wanted to ask you that. So is that your nice way of saying I'm in the wrong job or not? No, no, well, uh, no <laughs> I think what I think. No, obviously not, because you get to do both. Right. I mean, the, the development of Hops and Halligans has been super successful. You guys are donating money. It's a lot of the money goes to, to good causes. You're bringing in great speakers. You're filling out bars and breweries across Connecticut and bringing the good word in. And, and that's what it's all about. Right. So it complements your job in the firehouse. But the media marketing side is usually the challenge for a lot of guys when they when they run a, a podcast or a training event or a conference. You seem to do that very well, man. Is there a background there? Honestly, you know, so, so my degree, I've got a master's degree in public administration. So there it, it has nothing to do with what I'm what I'm doing on, on the network. No, but uh, you but communicate. I was, I was you know fortunate. how to communicate. Oh, I, I can articulate on paper very well. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, though, like in person like this, a lot of times my Rhode Island accent comes out and I try not to. So, um, but, uh, you know, I, I was fortunate before Hops and Halligans was a thing. I organized an event called uh, Running with Jane or Jogging with Jane. And it okay. was a fundraiser uh, to, to basically memor, memor, uh, memorialize. I can't think of the right word there. Memorialize. Memorialize. Mm -hmm. See, this got is you. why I No worries. Paper, I got right? you. Put it on paper. And, uh, you know, this woman was... Uh, she was very influential in my life, and uh, a friend of mine, Jen and I, who came up the AB that we talked about earlier, uh, yeah. we organized this race in her memory. Uh, she passed nice. away from cancer, mm. and it was to raise funding and awareness for breast cancer as well as a scholarship for anyone from that particular school district going into education. And we really hit the platform of social media running hard, and I kind of got the niche with that, with advertising, wording frequency of putting stuff out and uh once hops took off I, I started that same kind of algorithm and it seems to be working you know there's there's always a critic that says you know you're putting out too much it's it's overdone but i mean there's this really fancy feature on facebook it's these three dots in the top right corner if you click that you can unsubscribe so whatever i'm doing it works because we're selling events out left and right i think uh ray mccormack coming up april uh concentric cool. in portland sold yeah, out in 11 days 100 yeah. tickets, 11 days flat. I got guys reaching out still. You snooze, you lose, bro. You know? Um, but whatever I'm doing, uh, it's working, but it's not It's not just an A-B thing. I mean, it's it's the influence and it's the support from all the sponsors, the vendors, guys like you. You were a chief level sponsor for our first event. And, you know, without without the, the impact of adding on the other businesses and names, we wouldn't have the success we have today. But social media is the way to get out. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, obviously I live in those channels for sure, but I, th I think what's really cool about that is the combination of all of it though, right? Like understanding relationships and understanding how to communicate to get the message across. And what I, what I love is you look at a state like Connecticut. Um, it's kind of a, it's a big state. I mean, it's, it's spread out, you know, compared to New Jersey where I am and to be able to bring in speakers and to spread the positive message and the good word and to promote the job it takes a lot of work and this for you must be a, a real passion project i would assume it's you know it's, it's a hard thing to explain but you know once once they take the actual platform of the stage and they start presenting it's like this natural high i, I don't know yeah. i can't really explain it unless you've done it well you've done it obviously but all all the work and effort going into it and then uh, once it finally hits you just you kind of just can relax you know, share a pint with yourself and your thoughts and just you, like you did this, you know, you're doing something positive for the fire service. And I think that's why it's so rewarding. I, 
you got that ability to bring people together from different departments, career, volunteer, young, old, but they're all there because they want to be. Like, no one's forced to be there. They're on their own dime, their own time. They're there wanting to better themselves and learn, but they're there to communicate. And, like, I don't know, it's – everybody leaves something. And I know it sounds so cliche, but, you know, leave it better than it was when you found it. But that's my goal. That's what I'm trying to do. And if I can bring some training to somebody that makes a difference later on on a call for service, like I did what I was supposed to do. I love that. And and if you think about it, like I never really thought about it that way before, but when we're doing training in the firehouse or on the fire ground or <clears throat> on the training yards, and you know this as a training captain of your fire department, guys are forced to be there. And so the level of learning or care to learn typically is not what you would find when they're there on their own dime or their own time. And so to be able to provide that environment where it says, hey, join us. There's opportunity here. You want to be here. Come. That's and, awesome and, because and that works. fuels it, right? That's oh, the fuel. Yeah. If they're there because they're getting paid, if they're there because it's contractual, there's not a vested interest. But when it's mm. when they willingly are putting in the effort to be there, like you mean, you and I first met in person. Uh, what it, actually it'll be a year ago next month in Wells, Maine at the Fools Conference. Uh, mm. Shout out to Rusty Ricker, by the way. Yeah. And Fools. Um, but, you know, like everybody there is there for three days because they want to be there. They want to learn. They want to be around each other. They want to better themselves, better the job. You can't ask for anything better than that. And, and, and I'm bringing that on a smaller platform to breweries around here. How does that how is that received in your hometown? And uh, I, I, I know that's a loaded, very yeah, loaded no, I, question, I, I but I, say, I mean, but I but here's why I ask that. Right. So you can you can phrase it however you want. Right. But I, I like to kind of push a little bit only because usually our worst critics come from our home yep. and guys that get out and travel and teach and talk and praise the job and go out and see what it's like elsewhere then comes home and typically is treated like trash and and i don't mean that in your case i'm just saying i've seen that i experience some of that every once in a while and so that's part of the process so you're going above and beyond outside of the firehouse and yet you still have your every day that you have to manage and deal with. And so sometimes it's not overly well received, even though you're making a difference. It's it's hard to separate, not separate the two while I'm on the job, but it's hard to separate the two. Like everybody knows who AB is. Everybody knows Hops and Halligans. But if, if they want to be part of the process, they're going to be supportive. You know, yeah. um, Frank Frescuso said not that long ago in a post, if you don't have any critics, what have you been doing in your life? So, I mean, if I have critics because of H&H, &H, so be it. At least I'm having an impact. They're watching. Whether they like it or not, or they like me or not, they're watching. Mission accomplished, you know. Um, but, you know, I, I recently started networking with this gentleman, John Plofkin. He's a deputy chief up in Wilton, Connecticut. And his, his phrase, he said, was, it's no different than you or I, except I'm 20 miles away with a suitcase. And what he's getting at is, you know, when AB leaves and goes to Providence, Rhode Island, it's, it's, you know, it could be the gospel according to AB. I say one plus one is two, and they're like, oh, my God. But I come here and people know who I am. And they're like, no, you're, you're full of shit. Like, it's, you know, when you, when you don't have that rapport, you could, quote unquote, be a subject matter expert. So, like, um, I, I mean, I'm definitely met with critics. There's a lot of guys that either don't understand it or want to be a part of it. But, I mean, like I said, I, I really don't care. Um, I'm from a very small department. Uh, we've got 36 personnel, not counting administration. But I've been actually blessed, as small as a number as that is, I mean, they're one of the biggest presents at these events. E even some of the haters, they're still there buying tickets. They're still there throwing back beers, you know? Isn't that awesome? Hey, you know what? It's for a good <laughs> cause. I'll take your money. If it's going to hey, if it's gonna buy toys for Christmas, I'll take your money, man. Um, yeah, but you know, they're not the, – they might they might be the biggest critics, but it's all bark. There's no bite. The bite is they're, they're still attending. Absolutely. And so they see the value in it. So I've, I've got a gentleman, and uh, – you know, he's, he's a company officer, and I've said from the start, you know, when I was a backstep fireman, which I, I'll i admit I wasn't a backstep fireman there for long, um, but I said from day one, I used to tell the chief, I said, I want to work for him one day. I said, right, wrong, or different. I said, I love this guy. And this is the guy that when I first walked in the door, hey, AB, you've been here five minutes. Quite frankly, I don't give a fuck what your opinion is on low hose beds. And I smiled, and I said, okay, sir, and I walked away. He's one of my biggest supporters. It's all about my delivery, perception. And, and, and not for nothing, regardless of what my background and education experience was, I was new. And I needed to understand that. And they needed to take the time to see what I can bring to the table, what I offer. Is this is this just his persona because he's here as probationary, or is this who he really is? 
I haven't changed who, changed who I am in the fire service since 98 when I joined. It's 2024. So the guys that see that, they appreciate that. And I, res I respect them for their tenure in the department. I respect them for what they bring to the table. And there's now that mutual understanding. So this dude's one of my biggest supporters. He's now working the events. Yeah. I mean, the guy's awesome. He's, he's one of the biggest supporters I have. And, and from day one with the promotion process, with running H&H, &H, with another side project I want to talk about later, he's been right there on board. You can do this. You got this. Whatever you need, let me know. And uh, on his day off, the guy was there. Uh, I don't know if you saw, we did an event with Northeast Squad Concepts back in November of 23. And we actually sold our own brew that we did with the guys from Concentric. That's he was cool. down there on his own dime, own time. Slinging six packs. Well, actually, there are four packs of 16 ounces. But he was canning beer because he cares. He was canning beer because he wants to be part of the process. And he believes in this whole mission. And I couldn't ask for a better, a better influencer or, or company officer than him. Like, you know, he's now my friend. He was a company officer. He's now my friend. He, he He's a mentor. I mean, you're surrounded by positivity. There's there's haters, there's a, but you're surrounded by good people, too. Bro, there's a process, though. And yeah. I, I like I really like that about this conversation is that there's a process and you recognize that process early on. It takes time. This is a this is a long play. The fire service career is a long term play. There's no there's no short term play here. If you're in it, you're in it, but you're in it for the long haul. It's a marathon, not a sprint. There it is. And that's something that, uh, you know, you, you actually, you know, Chief Trasky pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor of Middletown, I like to call him. The guy's an absolute stud. I don't need to say that on the air, but you know that. And uh, he, but that's he always he'll reel me in a little bit. He's like, A B. He's like, listen, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Because he, you know, he sees my passion, he sees my drive. He doesn't want to see me get mm -hmm. burnt out. He doesn't want to see me get discouraged. But he also knows, you know, if I'm doing something, it's 110 percent, or I don't do it at all. Uh, but that's something that I needed to understand right off the rip my first year. Like, come in here and be the new guy. Like, it, it's it's you don't need to prove to them tomorrow what you've already done. Your actions right. will show it. Um, you know, it was a tough transition. Uh, I came in there, forty-one years old. Wow! Three kids, a master's degree, combined tw at the time what twenty-two, twenty-three years of volunteer and career, to, you know, experience. But I came there, and it didn't matter what I did from ninety-eight to two thousand twenty-one. I was the new guy, and I was outgoing to the point where, like, I mean, I'm an I'm a optimistic dude. You like, I'm always positive. I talk. It's what I do. Um, but I never crossed that line where I didn't tell. You know, I didn't tell people how to do their jobs. I didn't criticize why things were. I had to learn the history. There's a reason things are how they are, whether it's staffing, equipment, the contract. It's all history. And the sooner the guys can understand that and appreciate it, the more successful they're going to be. My biggest thing is I just want to go, 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 go. And that was hard for some people. But I, I, I mean, I'll be the first to admit, too, like, you know, I honestly feel I've had some type of a, a small impact on the culture, improving the culture. Because the, the drive and willingness to do things, it's contagious. At first, I think it's it's a little overwhelming. I think people can feel threatened. But after a while, it's, you know, you can either stand up and be counted or lay down and be mounted. It's something I've always said. But I, I think good. a lot of people, like they're that. influenced by, you know, the positivity yes. goes a long way. It does. It absolutely does because it takes more work. Positivity takes a lot more work than the negativity. But I, I want to ask you this because I had this early on. I struggled when I wanted change and I want it now. I want to do this. I want it now. I want to do this. I want it now. And I've come through maturity to understand that things take time. I, if you told me that this was a, a, a marathon or a, a long-term play, you know, 10 years ago, I would have been like, absolutely not, man. I'm in my prime. Like, you know, I got everything I need. And here I am 29 years in the fire service and running national fire radio now, still going to the firehouse on a regular basis. And I'm just scratching the surface, bro. It takes time, but you have to have a lot of conversation with yourself though, because there's this need for progression and it always, you always want it quicker than it's going to take hold. And that 100%. has to do with being positive and being influential in the cultural change. It doesn't happen overnight. And patience is what's lacking most today. And we need to tell our people to have patience. Take a breath. I say it all the time. Take a deep breath. Take yeah, I need, deep I need breath. to learn that. Trust me. So can, well, can I share a funny story to, but, with you? Yeah, please talk to me about that because I, I know that about you. I know <laughs> you're the type of guy I send a text message to and I'm getting 15 messages back. And then it's like, I'll get back to you in a couple minutes. And then you're another one coming. <laughs> 
it's because of how you work. That's 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 why go, go, Hops go. and Halligans is successful. Yeah. That's why the projects that you take on are doing well. That's why you are part of the cultural change yeah. because you're you're that way. I get it, but share with me the ups and downs of being like that. So, you know, my my first year in the firehouse, um I hope my wife doesn't listen to this because she still thinks all the union meetings are mandatory. So, oh, here we go. <laughs> the only one I've ever missed was because I had COVID. They would not let me there. I mean, yeah. I would have done it from Zoom in the car. Whatever. I got it. So, you know, every month we meet up and they're always talking about this table. We want to get a table. We want to get a table. And I heard them talk about it. But again, it's me, like no patience, trying to do a sprint. And, uh, you know, nine months go by and I keep hearing about this table. I got to understand there's a committee, there's a process, there's history, right? So we're getting ready for Christmas time, 2021. I call it, I refer to this as Tablegate 21, big controversy <laughs> here, you know? And uh, I ended up making a table for the firehouse. And the purpose is to get guys to sit around a table, even if it's 100%. for five minutes, yep. sipping a coffee, there's no negativity, yep. there's no bitch, bitching and moaning, there's no complaining. And if people can sit there and enjoy what they're doing for five minutes, that might transpire into 10 minutes, into a shift, whatever. So I, I'm working out in the garage for a couple of days. I put together this tabletop. It's got our, you know, my wife made up a really nice logo with our, our, our union logo in it and our, tel our title. All the apparatus is outlined. I trim it out. So it's like 2.30 in the morning. I load it up. I drive to the firehouse. All the guys on deep platoon are in bed. I set it in the kitchen. You know, Santa leaves a note, fresh pot of coffee. I leave. At that time, I'm on A platoon, and I come in the next morning. I just act like I have no fucking clue what's going on. I just stroll in, and I look in, and it's awesome because exactly what I wanted to happen, I see the guys leaving from D, the guys coming from A, and they're all talking about it. Oh, my God, who was this? This is cool. And right off the rip, someone goes, well, it definitely wasn't Russo because look at the, the, the joints on this. I'm not a carpenter by any means. This guy is nice. like the, the jack of all Got trades, it. you know? Yeah, right, but right, the, right. It was awesome because they're trying mm -hmm. to figure out who did it, and, 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 but you can just see the genuine, like, oh, this is great, you know? So a few days goes by. Uh, <laughs> my then deputy fire chief apparently was trying to take credit for it, which was fine. I didn't want I didn't want to be known. What gave it away was the quote from Santa, and it was it was a quote from Rescue 2 and FDNY, and people just, they knew it wasn't him, obviously. Um, but then once they found out it was the new guy, it was a different story now. And it took me a while to understand why they felt like that. And again, it's 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 having patience. It's knowing the history. There was a committee put together for that. And you know, in my mindset, I'm like, again, stand up, be counted, lay down every mount, and stop talking about it. Let's take some action. I figured yeah. it was a nice gesture. It was a nice thing to do. Mm -hmm. I can't afford to buy a gift for every guy that works in the department. Let me let me do this for them. But if you look, take a step back and let me look at it from their perspective. This guy walks in here, doesn't know this from that. We've been looking at this table project for over a year now, and here he comes in and does it. And I get it. I see. I see where it comes. I can. I, I definitely can see it. And I understood it. It was a hard pill to swallow. It was a very humbling experience. While I'm sitting there trying to help change the culture, help promote positivity, do something nice, I kind of shot myself in the foot. And it took me a while to get some respect from some of those guys back. Um, and I think they all knew and realized there was no ill intention. Um, but it, right. you know, it turned now it's kind of a running joke. We're getting an addition on the firehouse and they're talking about expanding the kitchen and someone's like, Oh, we're going to have to get a new table. And I'm like, I know a guy, you know, <laughs> in, yeah, but, in, in my yeah. head, it's funny, but you know, when you go to bed one night, maybe you'll wake up tomorrow morning and it'll just be done because <laughs> you guys drag your asses. on making decisions around here. I'll take care of it. There's something to be said for that. I mean, and timing is everything obviously. Yeah. Right. But you took something that wasn't happening and has become a, item of contention and they're dragging their feet i agree with you guys are the worst when we put committees together it's the worst because we don't make progress like i almost think you know in a committee you have a chairman and i think the chairman needs to do the majority of the work and just get everybody else to sign on and help support that but you got to have a dynamic leader and when you when you don't nothing gets accomplished and and we need to move through life with accomplishment how much shit is left hanging, like, all the time? Well, we got a table like, to the next meeting, no pun intended, but it, that's what right. it always does. And 30 days turns into... Progress, oh, progress, and, progress. But that's why with H&H, &H, you know, a lot of... Oh, you need help, you need help. I don't. Because it's not that I'm a control freak, but if I take the ball and I run with it, it's going to happen.
you know, and I, I, and I also don't like asking. I don't it. like relying on people. I don't like asking for help. Um, I just I've never been. I don't I don't ask for money. I don't ask for help. I moved a fridge in my house by myself. I thought I was gonna blow two discs out. I don't ask for help. I just don't like to be that guy, you know. Um, I'm very much the same way, but I have learned that when you get to a certain point, and you especially say business, you know, and Hops and Halligans is gonna get there. You're going to need to rely on people and you're going to need to start bringing people in to help you scale. You know, it's one thing to be a startup and a thought and an idea which comes to fruition and you can control it. But if you want to scale it, that's where you really have to believe in the people that you surround yourself with. And I think you could take that right back to the firehouse. Oh, 100%. It's the same Absolutely. thing with on the fire ground. Like the, the captain of the engine of the truck, it's his people that perform. And you got you to gotta allow for that to happen um people forget that sometimes and um and i always say we gotta let our people work you got people put them to work they'll make or break you as a boss absolutely <clears throat> create an environment where they know what's expected of them give them the expectations tell them what's expected and then let them go let them go and that's actually you know something that i i, I try to implement in with, with my position with training and safety is I don't need to be involved with everything. I need to facilitate it. You know, I understand that t this week's subject is going to be so and so. I'll develop a lesson plan. I'll find the resource. I'll find a facility, whatever. But my job function is to facilitate it. Let them do it. The officers that run those platoons are more than competent to do my job. I just happen yeah. to be the one in the position. Some of them, I'll, I'll tell you right now, they're probably better at it than I would be. Let them run their crew, or let the guy on that shift who has that as a as a as a strength. Let him or her run that. You know, I, I'm not the uh, I'm trying to think of like a master or something, but like I'm not the Tom Brady of ropes and knots. I'm not a Pats right. fan, sorry, bro. But like right. you know, I'm not. The no, so, you're not. I uh, thought no. everyone was uh, in New no, England. No, sorry, like, man. I was well, going. That was for a Detroit. prerequisite. No? no, I was going for Detroit. Connecticut doesn't have a football team, so I figured it just went right to Massachusetts. No. <sighs> I coach youth football. Okay. I'm not. I'm not big in the New England though. I'm sorry. All the, right. uh, but you know, like I, I'm not this rope guru. I've got. I've got a very good foundation. But <clears throat> you know, it's, I'd much rather let the firemen that's on that platoon or that respective group training let them take the lead because I know if it's a passion of theirs, they do you know stuff on the outside. They've got a significant background with education experience. You know, it's let let like you said, let them do the work. Well, and not only that, but it it also bolsters this incredible opportunity to allow people to shine. And when you allow someone to share the spotlight or give the spotlight to that person, it not only shows the crew, the company that you endorse your people, but it also just pushes that guy, that proud moment of like, yeah, I'll do this. Like, and it's just this, like, you know, check the box of like, give this guy credit. Like, right. You know what I mean? And everybody needs that little attaboy every once in a while. It doesn't need to be said. Atta, but the best attaboys in the world on the fire ground is a quick look or a glance or a smile or a laugh or, you know what I mean? It doesn't even have to be verbal. And so when you allow your people to shine, those are the attaboys, man. And, you know, well, that's my job. I don't need it. Well, no, sometimes you need to be recognized. And that, that little bit of recognition helps them to continue to progress, continue to want to be yeah. there, have a vested interest. The, yes. um, you kind of hit on a good point that uh, I posted something the other day. You, you follow Back of the Bay. Yes, and, uh, I love it. They said the other day, the biggest accomplishment to my career will always be seeing the people I work with succeed. And that's that's my main mindset in my position. I want the people and the department to succeed because when I leave, the South Fire District's still going to be going on. It's not about AB. It's about the department. And anything that I've ever done since I've walked in those doors was to benefit the department, not myself. You know, I'm just one person. You know, I get it. I absolutely get it. And that's what I think people need to realize and recognize more so now than ever is that this is a team approach, man. Like, it's it's a team. Kansas City Chiefs won last night because it was a team. It wasn't just Mahomes. Mahomes might be the guy behind the wheel. No, no, it's scripted. But You didn't see it on social media? Well, the whole thing's scripted, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's been a hell for of a season for a lot. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of scripts being written this year. But <clears throat> my point is it takes it takes everyone. And, like, at the end of the day, when you do walk out, volunteer career, when you leave, it's still there. It's still going to go on. So what was your contribution? What did you do to push it forward? And how are they going to remember you? Are they even going to remember you? Well, hopefully doesn't they, matter. Hopefully Maybe they it do doesn't it in a matter. Good way, though, you know? <laughs> so, well, or in a bad way. Well, so. Right? Like, we, go ahead. You know, we talked a lot about culture. 
and, you know, sitting around the coffee table, whatever. But, like, how many guys do you know from your volley house that used to be members? You, you may not have known them or ran with them, but you hear the names, you hear the stories. But how many times are these stories have a negative aspect to it or speaking ill of somebody? Like, I don't want to leave in in this department or in this service or wherever. You know, I, I might not even be here the rest of my life. We don't know. But I don't want to leave the fire service as a whole with negative things being said. I want it to be about what contributions I've made, whether it's to a person, to a department, to Hobson and Halligans, and so forth. And there's nothing worse. I love sitting around. We had a retirement's breakfast uh, about two months ago. And the best part of that was sitting around and watching the retired guys talk and tell stories, like good stories. Yes. Because you, yes. you, you understand why certain guys that are working now are the way they are. They're a product of their environment, or this is what they were exposed to, and so forth. But just seeing where this department actually came from <clears throat> opens up so many things. It's amazing. What I don't like is sitting around though and hearing hearing the shit talk. You know, uh, I, I mean, be part of the problem or this part of the solution. You choose. Well, why be part of the problem? Like, stop talking smack. There's nothing worse than that. Don't talk ill about your company officers. Don't talk ill about the guys on the floor. Fix what is wrong. Be that influence to fix it. I'll never forget when I first got on. I'm on overtime. We had a bullshit chimney fire. And things, in my mind, they ran smooth. And I get back, and there's two guys running their gums about so-and-so on the fire ground. He doesn't know this. He doesn't know that. And I'm thinking to myself, if I haven't been here for a year, you know what I'd say right now? Why don't you go show him? Right. Rather than run in your mouth, go teach him. Because he's mm -hmm. never going to learn. And there, there's nothing. I, I, I'm in a weird position now where, like, I, I'm not administration full-blown, and I'm not a company officer full-blown. I'm like this lone man on an island. I'm the last spot in the union. I'm not part of one of the boys on the floor, but I'm not one of the brass. I'm like this middleman in between the two of them. And I really want to sit there and be able to tell people, like, all right, enough is enough. All right, bite your tongue. But it's not really my role or place. But then at the end of the day, it is. Because even if you're a fireman, it's your first day, or you're the salty old guy who's been here for 30, create that culture on the floor and tell people to shut up. Stop. There's a door. We're not, no, no one forces you to come here. There's no draft card to get into the firehouse. You know, right? If you don't like it, leave. Stop spreading that negativity because it's contagious. I think if you do not get involved, you're part of the problem. I, no, I agree. I agree. You're letting, you know, it, it, you're letting it, it fester. Yeah. And, and so if you're going to, well, it's not my job to say anything. And I'm like, well, no, it is, right? This whole place is our job. Like, everybody should be involved. And if you see something that you don't like or see something that's detrimental or something that's not working and it doesn't represent what you want to be known for. Stifle it right then and there. Say something, man. Get involved. But you know what that takes? Spine. Some, you know what that takes? Some people don't Work. have it. They don't have it. They talk, but they don't have it. Here's the thing. You're going to climb through a window with smoke blowing out over your head or you're going to stretch a line in on a, on a first do fire. You got a fucking spine. And I was saying just on another episode recently, I was like, you know, the easiest thing we do is the fire ground. Oh, th it's the everyday stuff is the hardest stuff. And that's where we really see. Are you like, we don't, we don't question if a guy's a man on the fire ground. Are you a fucking man? You're going to man up. No, we don't question that on the fire ground because it. it's expected. It's expected of you. Yep. What are you going to man up in the firehouse? Are you going to have a hard conversation? Are you going to hold somebody accountable? Are you going to hold yourself accountable? That's the hard stuff, man. And a lot of guys struggle with that. I, I, I str we all struggle with it. I'm not, per I'm not sitting here preaching. I hate when people are like, preach. And I'm like, I'm not fucking preaching. I'm just telling you what I think. You're being honest. I'm not preaching. You're being honest. Because I am, I am as fault. I have my faults too. And I am no better than anyone else by any means. And there are times that I should get involved and I don't. There's things going on that I'm like, oh, I don't like the way this is going, but I just turn my back and walk away because I don't have the time. I don't have the whatever, whatever excuse I want to throw at it. But at the end of the day, I should be getting it. I should speak up. I should say something. And we have to get there. The guys of yesterday didn't have all these distractions, and so they didn't. They were very protective of what they had, and they had no problem holding you accountable. We need to hold our people accountable. And that's the And to hold yourself accountable. Yeah. The culture today, no one's held accountable because you're so worried about offending someone. You're so worried about ramifications. If people were held accountable, so much would change.
so yeah, much but bro, it change. does it does exist. It exists in firehouses that promote it. Like you go to good fire. I go to incredible firehouses all over the country, and you walk in, and I literally, as soon as you walk in that door, you can you're like, I get it. Like, I know what this place is. I know who the characters are. I get it. And they are good shops with great guys and no bullshit because when you have the right recipe, it fucking works and it doesn't allow for anything bad. Absolutely. You're going to have little things here and there. But if you have a good culture, you let your people work, you have good, good structured bosses, you have systems, programs, experience, all those things in place, and it's a good place to be. They're not going to let the bullshit fester. They don't because they hold themselves accountable and they hold the people accountable. So it does exist. Absolutely. It's not rampant. It's, it's just it's becoming more and more of a problem, and we need to address it. It's a learned behavior, and that and that's the bad part. Yeah. So, you know, to kind of tie in a few things of what, what we're saying and, and what, you know, with hops and everything. So Concentric Brewing Company out of Portland, they're, they're like the main hub for most of the events. Not a firefighter owned brewery. And that's why I go. Well, every vendor or sponsor is firefighter owned because that's love it. it's about promoting their businesses. I met him. What's his What's his name? Drew France. That's He's right. A I met him chief. at. Yeah, I met him there. I stopped in that one time when I was driving through. I couldn't stay for the whole event, but uh, I stopped in. Yeah. So he's he's the biggest reason I reached out to them when this whole process started. So we're all city of Middletown is three separate tax tax districts. So it's three separate entities. There's Westfield, there's South District, there's Downtown or Middle Middletown. There, you know, with any any area, whether it's California or Connecticut, whether it's volunteer or career, East Coast, West Coast, there's always some type of history, some type of tension. I, I've only been here for four years, so I don't know what transpired in the past. Be honest with right. you, I don't give a shit what happened in the past. I'm here for the now, and I'm here to make the future better. So I reached out to him knowing he's from the downtown department. Let's, let's extend this olive branch. If him and I can work together on the outside – through Hops and Halligans and Concentric Brewing Company, maybe that can transition and transpire to working together now on the fire ground. And I've noticed a significant difference in the short time I've been working here. There has been a better relationship established because it's a learned behavior. If I was to go in and I, and I sit there and listen to one of their guys speak ill of us or one of us speak ill of them, I wasn't a part of that. And if you're under the age of 40 and that's how you feel, that's a learned behavior. Change it. All right. I, I mean, I, I, I appreciate history. I respect history, but history is where it belongs in the past right now. Let's progress and move forward. And I'll never hold anybody, hold it against anybody because of where they're from or where they operate out of based off of history. And there's a great group of guys coming up in both South District and downtown. And the more we work together, the more we collaborate at social events like this on the training ground and on the fire ground, we're going to be unstoppable. You know, this is going to be the place people want to work. People want to go to the Forest City and make a career because it's the place to be. You know, we have great staffing, great call volume, great networking. And, and the more that we can realize that and we can work together, we're just we're just going to become what most people strive to be. We got to get past that other stuff. I, I, that's my goal. When I leave here, my goal is to just continue to make this a better place to work and continue to, to, to better the relationship we have with them. I'll never go out. I just want you to know I'm, I'm a listening to every I'm I'm writing and texting <clears throat> while we're doing this because I love I want to come back to this, man. Okay. I want to develop this idea of of learned behavior. I absolutely love what you said, that if you're under 40, you know, your, your thoughts and ideas were learned here. It's learned behavior. You don't know any different. We need to fix that. I love, brother, I love that, man. I want to explore that in my content because I think there's so much there. I think pointing it out that way and talking about it is that, like, you don't know any better. It's, it's, I say the same thing when it comes to, like, a change in policy, and the guys hate it. And I'm like, yeah, but guys 10 years from now, that's all they'll know. And so they don't know the struggle behind it, right? There's, in the words of you, there's history, quote, unquote, right? So, like, if you don't know the struggles in the history – and then you just choose not to like something because it's learned behavior. You're like, God, I but love we're that. The ones That's that are, really we're good. teaching that learned behavior. I mean, yes. it's, it's not like it's a fire yes. department thing. I get that from being a dad of three kids. I get that to being 100%. A, a new football coach. But, you know, go back to policies and procedures. The department brass de develops and implements this policy, and my job is to come down and to portray that to all four platoons. If I walk in there and I'm like, 
this is fucking bullshit, and this is what they want us to yeah. do. Right off oh the rip, God. there's no vested interest. And if I bring it, and I have some buy-in within it myself, and I portray that, hopefully they'll do the same. But as soon as they don't, I need to stifle it and make sure they understand. Because we're not four separate departments. We're four separate shifts working in one agency, and we have to be on the same page. We have to be. Stifle it right then and there. That's good. That's really good. So give me a little bit more of a break. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> I got a frog going here. Um, give me a little breakdown about being in that training position, what that looks like, and then how did that complement you rolling out Hops and Halligans? Because there's <clears throat> obviously a branch there. It connects. So, so how did that all come about? You know, it, it came about a little prematurely. Um, again, we're a small department. There's, there's line officers, there's a lieutenant, and a captain per shift. We run a four-man engine, four-man truck, four groups. And then there's the captain of training and safety, fire marshal's office, and then the brass. So there's not a whole lot of room to advance necessarily over a career, a tenure in the department. Right. And being my age, if I take a look back at the, the lineup of the lieutenants currently and the lineup of those who have the ability due to uh, seniority and education who can test, chances are in my career, being my age, I would never be able to to ha have that opportunity to become a lieutenant. So I capitalized yeah, on anywhere. this when it came available. Um, you know, it's a great process. They use a third-party uh, company, Mission CIT, um, and they come in, they do the written examination. There's, you know, there's a reading list that, uh, that, compare, um, that goes along with that. They do the oral board process, and then they provide a, a award a point system. You get X amount from the oral, X amount from the written, X amount for seniority and so forth, and then, you know, the chiefs appoint and so forth. Um it's, it's a position that I feel at times can be kind of a thankless position. Um, however, at the same time, it's a very influential position. And you have the ability, whether it's you know implementing and procuring new equipment or new tactics, you have the ability to kind of change the direction that the department's going to go. Um, but uh, it, you know, it, it was definitely a struggle in the beginning being more hands-off. Um, I like to get involved. I like to help out and I learned very quickly at my first fire because it's training and safety. So, you know, Monday through Friday, 40 hours a week, I do safe uh, training. But if there's a call for service that warrants the need for a safety officer, I respond. And then I come in off duty. Um, but you're, you're, you're the eyes and ears. You're not there to, you're not there to give direction and guidance. You're not there to help anything. And, uh, you know, even just, you know, post incident trying to help someone roll hose one day. Someone's like, whoa, whoa, take a step back, brother. And I'm like, wait a minute. But it's not beneath me, you know. But it's not that they view it as that. I think, A, they respect the position, and B, it's it's their job, you know? Um, but that, that really comes into play with Hops and Halligans, especially because of, of the networking aspect, you know, uh, reaching out. And some of these presenters that we've been very fortunate to have, they've actually helped me to implement some training lessons. They've, they've come in, done some, you know, on-duty on, on training with the guys. It's awesome. Um, and it's just a matter of, like, you know, a different perspective. You know, you got, you got RJ from Frederick County coming up to do a class. That's apples to oranges. You know, they do things down there completely different than you do over here in the East Coast or up north. So seeing something that they may use and implementing it here is bettering me as in my position, bettering them on the fire yeah. ground and so forth. Um no, it's it's been it's been crazy. Um <laughs> gotta get sidetracked on there, sorry. Um No, you're good. No, but, but the, <laughs> no, the, I get the it. position itself has come with some struggles. Um and I think with anything in your first year or two it's gonna happen. Um, cause you got to find yourself, you got to find what works. Um, I implemented a lot of things right off the rip, right out of the gate that, you know, probably could have been, probably could have waited, um, probably could have, could have approached it a little bit differently. Um, but the best thing that that's come out of this is, uh, I do this thing called coffee table quick tips and it, every week I publish a coffee table quick tip. It goes out on the board of training and safety. It gets sent out electronically to all the company officers. And the concept behind it is. That at the start of their shift, every week, they have a new piece of paper. It's literally five minutes. You're sitting around having coffee, and you discuss it, and it's a quick tip. It may not be pertinent to that day or a call for service that you come in, but if it's something you put in the back of your head, and later yeah. on, it made a difference. So we actually have, a, on an annual basis, we bring in an intern, which is pretty cool. It's kind of nice to see the youth have a vested interest in wanting to pursue this career. And uh, we had a young gentleman from one of the volunteer companies the next town over, and he, he ends up texting me one day. He goes, hey, Cap. He's like, uh, remember that coffee table quick tip on so-and-so? And I'm like, I had to go back and look, you know. He was at a call for service, your routine, you know, some type of odor investigation, something burning, might be electrical. I, and this, call, this particular one that week was, don't chalk it up to unfounded. Investigate further. 
open up the dishwasher. If you notice the sink is empty and they just ran a load of dishes and you got that, that electrical burning or that plastic burning, open up the door, look down bottom near the element, the heating element, a spatula, a cover from the, uh, uh, sure. the, the Chinese container. It's melting. And that's what he did. They were going to chalk it up to unfounded. He, he politely intervened. You know, it was all about delivery on his part. He's a young kid. And that's what it was. They found out that it was something burning on the heating element that dropped in from the load. So again, it wasn't life-saving. It wasn't anything earth-shattering. But three weeks down the road, he remembered reading it is in the back of his head. And that's why I do them. So every week it goes out. And uh, you know, ho hopefully one day it can have a, an impact on someone on a call for service. Do you compile them? So like, do you keep them in a, they keep them in a spiral or so something? This or leads just... me to the next big announcement. So besides you know, yours truly, Jeremy Donch from National Fire Radio, coming to deliver his presentation in November at Bad Sons. The other big announcement I had is that I'm actually working now with Covenant Publishing out of South Carolina. And uh, right before Christmas time, I put together a manuscript, and it's it's based off of the compilation of Coffee Table Quick Tips. Um, nice. they, they don't really work with that, um, that audience at all. You know, the fire service or training elements, and they really like the concept behind it. And uh, right now it's pretty much in its infancy stages. Um, it's a matter of accruing the remainder of the funding to get the ball rolling. Um, but it looks like if, if all goes according to plan, I'd like to have an affordable book. You know, my goal is $19.99 or $24.99. Sure. An affordable book that can be offered around November time of this year. Uh, it's a great stocking stuffer for your firefighter significant other. It's a great gift for the guys in your crew. But at the end of the day, whether you're a company officer or you're a training officer, it's another thing you could throw in your library as a resource that you could pump out every week to give you guys some type of direction. You know, I mean, obviously with you know non-negotiables and meetings and calls for service, you don't always get something structured out every shift for trading. But if you can have that quick little catch up or meeting over coffee, that, that that's training. It's training in its sense. I think, so, I think some of the very best stuff is just conversation. Oh, hundred percent around the table, and, around the and, tailboard. Yeah. And, and I think, I mean, that's a big part of why I do what I do. You know, it's getting and, and what I say at the end of the podcast, take this back to the firehouse and talk about it because it makes the job better. Talk about the job. Talk about firefighting. Like I say to my guys all the time, I'm like, do you guys did you talk about firefighting today? Like sitting around the table, are you talking about football all day? Are you talking about your cars, your kid? Like, what are you talking about? Are we can we give five minutes to the fire service? We got to put Let's our phones talk down about first. the job. Talk about the job. It makes listen. Keep your phone in your face. Talk about something you see about the fire service. Like I'm okay with that. That's a reality, right? From seven to seventy, everybody's on their phones. So put it to our benefit. You know, um, I think there is a time and a place to put it down for sure. But I'm saying like everybody's on social media and it's like you're scrolling through. You're like, hey, did you guys see this? This is crazy. Go to so and so's page. Look at this. This is freaking nuts. Let's talk about this. That's training. That's a drill. That's conversation. That, oh, yeah, that looks like the building downtown. You know, if we had a stretch like that, like, it takes somebody, though, and this is the challenge, A.B., is it takes somebody to be the leader in that conversation. It takes somebody to know how to package. We need a salesman. We need somebody that can package that up and then deliver it without them even knowing that you're delivering them, uh, hand delivering them something that you want to do. That's a salesman. We need that position in every single firehouse. A lot of firehouses still have it. Some don't. Some lack the salesman. The salesman's the guy that gets his way at the motor pool or knows how to talk to the dispatchers or can sweet talk the chief secretary or whatever it is. It's the salesman. We need that guy. He's the guy that packages it, packages it all up. It's delivery. Puts a butt and then delivers it. Yeah. So hell yeah! If, if you're, if you if you deliver it in a way that it, it, they almost think it's their idea, they're going to be more apt to be open to it. You know, there's got to be buying or or how you can, how you can effectively show that it relates to them or relates to what they're doing. They're going to have buying in it. There is a fine art to the salesman, and it takes time and it takes experience, and it takes a certain way. And a lot of times, how you can sell the best is to make everyone else feel like it was their idea or their thought process. Let them believe that they were part of the process. And give them the credit, and you can sell them anything you want. Even the bridge. is a bridge That's in it. New York for sale all the time. So, Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah. So let's talk about this. Uh, moving forward this year, Hops and Halligans. 
Um, you got the lineup in front of you. You want to talk it's, about uh, lineups? Yeah, what mean, do you want to do? It's absolutely ridiculous how, how this has taken off. Um, we've already got – so next week we're going to be delivering in Charlton, Mass. at Treehouse. Nick Esposito, cool. Truck Tactics. Yeah. 14 so days first off, Nick Espo- Yeah. First off, Nick Esposito. Second off, Treehouse. Yeah. Treehouse is one of the best breweries in the country. I think it's rated one of the best – uh, breweries in the country they provide a great uh, atmosphere micro- that, that's the biggest thing the yeah. environment itself so now you yeah. throw in someone like nick and the environment just doubled it's awesome that's cool that's very cool congratulations on the success of that that's going to be a blowout for first sure. first time uh, what first else time out of state um i mean this this guy right here is a heavy hitter we're going back to concentric in april on april 9th we got ray mccormack you know nice um we we're that's sold out as well so those two shows are sold out we just went live uh, not last Sunday, but the one before that from Mark Gregory. He's going to be coming to Concentric in June. Um, actually, PL Vulcan. A PL Vulcan. Yep, absolutely. Yep. He's going to be doing a nice writ delivery. Um, that I mean, I, I guarantee that'll be gone by the end of the week. We've got, I think we have 26 tickets left. So, you know, s- 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 get it now or you know, stay home. I'm sorry, but <laughs> yeah. um, the the boss of Brockton, Brian Nardelli. Uh, haven't started promoting it yet. Threw a little teaser out a couple weeks ago, but he's going to be coming in. Initially, he was supposed to close out the year for Hops and Halligans in October at Concentric. Uh, but then we started talking about Derby bringing you in. So we got uh, after Brian Nardelli, we'll close out the year with you. And then uh, we'll just end up with another fundraiser. Um, we do a Christmas fundraiser called Halligans for the Holidays. Uh, Fred Malvin, nice. my, my opinion, one of the best tool manufacturers out there. Uh, we get a Halligan bar from him. Kind of goes with the name. And we open it up on the on the first of December. We set X amount of tickets, X amount of price. As soon as it's done, we pull a number, and all those the funding is actually used to buy toys for the kids over at Connecticut Children's Hospital. So I mean, nice. It's this this year is is already booked. Um, it's I I I, I, I you know I'm overwhelmed. I'm grateful, but in the same sense, I kind of wish it wasn't because there's so many other people that are reaching out, wanting to get involved. Uh, and that's the thing now. In, in a year, it's now people reaching out to us, whether it's a vendor or a sponsor or a presenter. Hey, how do we get involved in this? I don't. I don't have to ask for anything. Um, I mean, you've got. I mean, you obviously are very well versed with uh, uh, Capital City Industries out of Hartford, Ashley Shapiro. Sure. I, I I couldn't even begin to explain how over the top they've been with you know generosity, uh, setting up shop as a vendor, donating tools for raffles, just support with plugging the programs, and it's those people, which is what that have this other shared vested interest. R. J. Aaron Heller. Rusty, yourself, Ashley, it's all these other guys that have been doing this for a long time. If I didn't have their support, if they weren't plugging away Hops and Halligan's promotions, we wouldn't have the success we have. So, I mean, I, it's, it's not just an A-B production. Like, it's a collaborative effort of some of the biggest and best names in the industry. Well, but they don't get behind something that's not worth getting behind. And so, you know, kudos it. to you and your team, it. 100%. There's a mission here. Um, and I think that's what's fun. So I wanted to ask you then, did you ever imagine it scaling like it has? Absolutely and, and... not. So so I remember you know, when I first came up with the idea, it's just one of those things like, you know, I don't mind traveling, but, you know, why am I constantly going out of state to, to hit up these events, you know? Yeah. So I approached the chief about the idea, and, and this dude's been a huge advocate of me from day one. But, you know, it's one of those things like the department can't really get behind it, and, and you know the union wasn't going to get behind it. And I told him, just like with anything else, don't doubt me or tell me no, because you know what's going to happen. And uh, nice. so I ended up, actually, Nick Esposito was supposed to be the first Hops and Halligans. And his program blew up so much, he just, you know, unfortunately, he just couldn't commit. Because, again, I, I want to go, 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 move, move, move. And I ended up reaching out and networking with RJ. His father, actually, is a senior man on B Platoon, where I work. Um, yes. So I ended up hooking up with RJ and Charles Henry. And they were the inaugural Hops and Halligans event. And... Yeah, you know, my wife's like, wait a minute, you're crazy. She's so, who's going to pay for this when this doesn't happen? I was like, what do you mean? She's like, so you committed to a place to sell X amount of tickets, to, and you got you got to put them in a hotel. You got to pay for their time and service. You got to, you know. And I said, Renee, just have faith, will you? Just relax. And then 30 days Sometimes. later, the thing is sold out and a huge success. It was overwhelming. So then I knew right there, then and there, it, it was going to work. There was there was something going on that people wanted in on it, and people wanted to attend. And it wasn't even 24 hours after the event. I got guys reaching out. When's the next event? I said, oh, are you kidding me? Within a week, we had 2.0 up and running. And that's where we brought in uh, Brian Bell Humor, Danny Rinaldi from Providence Fire. Again, same thing. Sold out almost overnight. Uh, it was an unbelievable crowd and presentation. 
There happened to be someone in attendance then, uh, Jason Rivera from Northeast Squad Concepts. How do we get involved? What do you want to do? Him and Josh Miller came out and did Hops and Halligan's Northeast Experience. Boom, sold out. Overwhelming. You want to talk about guys that are willing to... I mean, these guys were nothing but accommodating, and they put together such a great program. And then uh, in attendance, we had some guys from Charlton, Mass., um, at one of the Hops and Halligans in Concentric. That's why we're going to Treehouse. They wanted to bring it there. Um, you'd be surprised. Every every New England state, with the exception of Vermont, we've had in attendance at our programs. We've got guys coming up from Ohio for Ray McCormack. I'm still waiting on uh, confirmation of some guys from Montreal. Like, so, okay, we're going international, you know? Um, and then it's it, it just keeps picking and picking and picking up. You want to talk about <clears> exciting? <throat> Brass City Inc. out of Waterbury. They've been a chief yes. level sponsor from us from the get go. All our swag, all our merchandise, besides our challenge coins, that's 100% Dave and Hannah. And they do a tremendous job. So Dave's Dave approached. He's like, hey, let's do this online apparel store. I said, I mean, give it a shot. What's it cost me? He's like, nothing. He's like, we'll put up snapbacks, hoodies, t- you name it, we'll do it. He put it up for two weeks online, shut it down, started going to work, shipping it all out. We sent H&H swag to Texas, Maryland, South Carolina, Georgia, and every New England state with the exception of Vermont. That's incredible. And that's the power that's awesome. of the internet. Reach, baby. Oh, it's, yeah. it's awesome. It's, and again, you... The validation, the validation you're getting, though, has got to be the fuel that you need. Yeah. No, I, I mean, it's, it definitely makes me feel... It makes me feel good about it. It knows that whatever I'm doing is working. It knows that people have confidence in the vision and you know, the drive to make it happen. Um, these are people that are putting their reputations and their names... They're associating themselves with AB. They're associating themselves with Hops and Halligans. Like, that's a good feeling. That's a rewarding feeling. You know, the guy on shift might think I'm a complete jerk off. I'm not losing sleep over that. <laughs> These guys don't, you know? So, um, yeah. It's, it's amazing. And, and it's only been a year. It's only been a year. And it's amazing how far it's come and how far it's gone. Uh, I, I can't wait well, to I see where a- it goes. I can appreciate what it takes. We did our, right before COVID, we were doing our on tap series, which was very much the same thing. Um, and I know the moving pieces that went into it and it was national fire radio on tap. And we held a couple of them in different places across the East coast. Uh, and then COVID hit and we, we stopped them. We haven't started them back up. And then I look at the success that you're having and I'm like, well, I'm not going to start this again. These guys are doing a great thing here. Like how do we get involved? And so that's going to be a fun conversation for you and I, as the year ticks on this year is, how do we how do we get involved and, and what more can we do? Um, with that being said, uh, you got me lined up for November, right? You asked me to to do November November thirteenth, <clears throat> November thirteenth in Derby, Connecticut. That's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna do a, an abridged uh, bridging the gap program, uh, which usually is a three hour course. We'll break it down to like an hour and a half, and uh, we're just gonna go after it. And I'm I'm excited to do that. I think it'll be a lot of fun. And then all these other guys that you have coming in and speaking and and sharing a good word, bro. Nice work, man. It's awesome. Really nice work. It's awesome. Congratulations on your success. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. So anyway, uh, how do people get involved? What do they, what do you need? What do you, I know sponsors are always very helpful. I know that, uh, you know, you guys are very uh, philanthropic with your giving and, and so on. So, just give me a little background on that. What are you looking for? What do you need? And and so on. Well, the biggest thing with sponsorship is a lot of guys get scared because right off the rip, what, again, people are reaching out to us now. But when I had to approach people, it, they get scared. Like, well, what's it going to cost me? I was like, the, uh, the price of your internet bill? I don't know. Like, I don't charge people to become a sponsor. It's all it's all antics. It's a show because I make it look like a bigger production than it is. If people say, "Wow, this what is this all about?" They start getting like, getting into it. But the the goal of that is to help promote their businesses. You know, I, I've got a gentleman, uh, Wedge and Tool, Brian Giffen. I don't know him from the next guy, but you know what? We networked, we worked it out, we communicated. He's a he's a chief-level sponsor. I'm helping him sell wedges across the country, and he's helping me become a more validated uh, program, you know, the brand of Hops sure. and Halligans. So we, we're helping each other. But all these small... These guys that have this idea that they believe in, just like I believe in Hobson Halligans, whether it's a tool or equipment or a tactic, if I could promote them and help bring them to the next level, they're doing the same to me. It doesn't cost them money. It costs them taking a chance on me. And there's been a few people, you know, fortunately, I mean, they're not they're not retiring on it, but what promotion they've had with H&H has helped them to become a little bit more established themselves. And that's, that's why awesome. I do that. And it's the same thing with the on-site vendors. If they're willing to travel, there's no charge to set up a table. You come in, 
promote your stuff, whether it's swag, whether it's tools, come in and do it. And again, you, you can, you can benefit better, better your business. Um, the only thing I ever ask of anybody, if you have the ability is to donate something for a raffle, you know, and, and we've been fortunate. We've, you know, Metro ads, camera tool, uh, the Hartford hook, you name it. People are more than willing. Um, in Charlton, I love gonna it. Be, you, you know, Hank, Hank, Hank Hanlon from Maryland, he's part of RJ's crew, developed this yeah. strap, the hasty strap. We've used yep. it at the firehouse in training. Um, you know, we've explored different options. He's going to come set up shop in Charlton, Mass. The guy's from Maryland. Nobody here knows about him or his product. Well, now we're going to introduce it to the Commonwealth. Yeah, it's if awesome. he can sell one to every department and people see it on a call for service and he sells it again, he's now successful. And that's what it's all about. Bro, I... I love the the passion behind that. And something you said just resonates with me. It's somebody's got something and they believe in it. Just like I believed in hops and Halligans. We want to support that. And collaboration matters. That's brotherhood. That's sisterhood. That's what this is all about. Brotherhood is more and, than a $3 uh, sticker on your windshield. It's your actions. I love it, man. AB, thank you. Right. What a great topic today. What a great conversation. I appreciate your time, bro. Where can people find you? Where can they get more information about Hops and Halligans? They want to reach out. Give me all the rundown. Let's plug the shit out of this so people can reach out. <laughs> so we, we, we do run a, a Facebook page, Hops and Halligans LLC. Actually, we recently just changed our entity. Uh, it's, it's, it's on there as uh, Hops and Halligans Incorporated. Um, we're changing a few things up. But you can see us on Facebook, uh, Instagram, Hops and Halligans. And then any of the events that we run, there's always a Facebook page generated towards that event for promotion of the sponsors, promotion of the vendors, the speakers themselves. You can find them all on there. Um, you can email us. It's all lowercase, spelt out, hopsandhalligans at gmail.com. Um, you, I mean, you can always reach out to me on social media as well, AB Turen. Um, more than willing to entertain anything with anybody anytime. Yeah, time to take this thing on the road, man. Absolutely. I love it. AB, thank you for joining me today on the podcast. Jeremy, truly you appreciate everything. you joining and uh, just nice catching up with you for a few Absolutely. and truly very proud of the success you've had. Congratulations you. on all of it. And uh, well, you, I just you, know you what value you're bringing. I mean, you were there, for, you were there for the inaugural event. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, but I, did, I had no hand in this at all, man. <laughs> it's your hard work. The crew that runs with you, all the hard work. Don't let that, don't let, don't fool yourself. Man. I appreciate There's, that, brother. I know how much work. I know how much work goes into something like this. And so, you know, don't cheapen it for yourself, pal. It's a lot of hard work. And um, and I can recognize and understand. I can hear the passion in your voice about it. But I also know the takeaway you get from it only makes you better. That fuel, man, that is what I seek every time I do events or I speak or, you know, or I do a podcast. It's the takeaway that I personally get for it only makes me better, bro. And I see that in you. So congratulations you. on all your success, man, truly. Perfect. All right, we're going to go. I was waiting for one more goodbye from you, and I was like, no worries. Yeah. No, you're good, man. So hang out right here. I'm just going to sign off the podcast. I'm going to come right back to you, man. Hang on one sec, okay? Right. Hey, guys, thank you again. Another great episode of the National Fire Radio podcast. A.B. Turan, what a rock star, man. Hops and Halligans, check them out online on social media. you got to grab one of their events, get there, have a cold beverage, and listen to some of the best in the industry talk about a job they all love. A.B., thanks for joining me. Guys, do me a favor, take this conversation, take it back to the firehouse and talk about it, because when we're talking about the job, we're making the job better. We'll see you at the next one. Jeremy, National Fire Radio. Fire Radio.